In this video, we'll cover three ways to create a dynamic navbar for your responsive applications. We'll walk through how to create an animated, collapsed, and expanded navbar, and how to create a selected state and hover state for your navbar tabs. And finally, we'll talk about some exciting new releases that can help you get started at the end. Let's start in the Flutterflow Builder with this navbar component and walk through one way you can create an expanded and collapsed animated navbar. So step one, you'll first create an app state variable called nav open and set it as a Boolean. We're going to be using app state here so that we can navigate to the other pages in our web app and still retain the collapsed or expanded state. This variable will allow us to change the navbar to an expanded view when true and a collapsed view when set as false. Next, let's set the navbar container to size accordingly depending on whether our nav open variable is set as true or false. So here, I'll set a condition that if nav open is true, then we'll set the container to 270 pixels in width, and 72 pixels if false. Feel free to size this accordingly to how you want to design your own navbar. Also, we're going to go ahead and toggle on our implicit animation here. This is going to allow the sizing animation to occur when we set up our navbar action in step 5. Next, we're going to use conditional visibility to hide and display text depending on if our navopen variable is equal to true. So if navopen is equal to true, then this text widget is shown. And if navopen is equal to false, the container will collapse and this text widget, for example, will also not be shown. I'm going to set this conditional visibility up for other widgets that I want to hide when the navbar collapses as well. Once again, this is just one method to create a collapsed view and you can adapt it to your own use case. Also, in order to save myself some time, I'm simply copying and pasting the conditional variable I've already set up for the previous widget. I'm going to go ahead and set this up for the rest of my widgets that I want to hide on the collapsed state of the navbar. This is simply a general tip on using conditional visibility when you want to hide certain widgets on your collapsed state in your navbar. Now that we've created conditional visibility conditions on all the widgets we want to hide, let's create the open and close action on this icon for our user. I'm going to create an action on this icon that will allow the user to open and close the navbar. On action, I will update our app state of our nav open boolean from true to false and vice versa. This will allow the previous conditional visibility variables we have created, plus the container expansion conditions we've created, to execute when the user selects this icon. And lastly, let's go ahead and test it. And as you can see, we've created a cool animated navbar that the user can expand and collapse. Now let's dive into how to create a selected state for our navbar. In order to showcase that a user has selected a tab, and allows the user to navigate to that page in our web app, we need to display the tab change in our component, and we need to set actions on our component tabs to navigate to the correct page. Let's start with displaying the tab change in our component when it's embedded in our web app. So first up, let's create a component parameter. I'm going to use a simple integer method here, but there's many different ways to do this. So let's create a parameter called nav selected, set it as an integer, and require it to be passed. Now next, we'll go through on our individual pages and set an integer for our nav selected parameter for that page. I'm assigning these to be used for our conditions in the final steps of this process. For example, for the dashboard page, nav selected will be 1. For the users page, nav selected will be 2. For notifications, nav selected will be 3, and so on. I'll show you how we're using these integers in step 4, but first, let's go ahead and jump into setting up the actions when a user selects a nav item. For this step, you simply need to select the container for your tab and set an action to navigate to its corresponding web page. For example, in my component, I'll select the dashboard tab, navigate to the action editor, and create an action to navigate to the dashboard web page. We'll then set up these actions for all of our tabs. Let's also go ahead and add a hover state to make our navbar more dynamic. I'm going to wrap each tab in a mouse hover region here.
and I'll show you how to utilize this in the next step. Finally, let's set our conditions for the fill color for our individual tabs in order to showcase which tab is selected and which tab is being hovered over. We'll need multiple conditions here. So first off, let's set the condition for a corresponding mouse region. If mouse region 1 is hovered over, the fill color will be set to our secondary background color. Now, let's add another else if statement here. This is where we can utilize our nav selected parameter that we set up earlier. Since this is the dashboard tab, I'll set up a condition that if nav selected is equal to 1, then the fill color will be our accent color. And finally, if both these conditions are not met, then our tab will be our primary background color or in the unselected and unharbored state. And now I'm going to do the same for all of our tabs here by copying and pasting this variable and only changing the nav selected integer with the corresponding tab number. Once again, this is just one way to do this, and there's multiple different ways you can execute this flow on Flutterflow. And finally, let's go ahead and test. As you can see, our hovered state is working pretty well. And if we select the tab, we're able to change the color of the tab and navigate to the correct web page. I'm noticing that currently this is using a default transition type whenever we select tabs. So I'm going to go in and change this to instant. And now you can see that it's an instant transition to the next tab. Now you can continue to make edits to your nav bar depending on how you want to showcase it using these basic principles. And to help you get started on your responsive web app journey, we just released new responsive templates plus new nav bar components. You can find them by navigating to the pages view on Flutterflow and select any of the responsive title templates. And in order to find the new nav bar components, you can navigate to the components tab and type in side nav to see all of our new side navigation components. And if you built an interesting web app with a nav bar, be sure to share it with us on Twitter. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.